Good everyone, so you're probably wondering what you're looking at right now and to break it down simply, after the last episode I had a few leftover clips that I thought were worth sharing with you guys because they're pretty funny and they make up part of the adventure. So what you're seeing right now is day two as we've woken up on the island with my brand new boat that's been at anchor for the very first time overnight. Now this isn't anything new to me, I've done plenty of overnight island camping trips with my old boat which was a 4.2 metre tinny, but since moving up to this bigger boat, what I got wrong in this instance is setting roughly the same amount of chain and rope out as I normally would and during the night the tide has lifted enough to dramatically affect the anchorage and the boat has pushed up onshore which was a great relief rather than floating away to a further distance away from camp out to sea. So we've woken up in the morning and this is our first sight and before we've got into anything else it was now a rush to try and get the boat back down and into the water because the longer we left it the further out the tide was going to go and we were not going to get a high enough tide to get water back under the boat for probably be about a week in this instance because we were going back towards neat tides. So we lost the highest tide and we were just inching and inching as you can see here just trying to get the boat back in the water. Fortunately we had seven of us here and Eden was on the camera trying to capture the moment but much to my surprise this boat is actually a lot heavier than I realised when it comes to trying to move it off the beach so just my luck we had so many of us here and we were able to manhandle all the way back down to the water just fragments at a time but it eventually got to the point where I had to ask Eden to put the camera down and get all hands on deck quite literally to get the boat back in the water and get ourselves out of there to start the adventure for the day. As you can see here, after getting the boat back out onto the water there, we just quickly packed up our things and I warmed up a little bit back up on shore and then we were heading out for our dive on day two. The weather was not anything like we were hoping it would be, we thought we'd wake up to a glass forecast but that wasn't the case so we are working with what we had on offer and we headed out and got stuck into it. So as we pulled up to this first reef here that we were going to look at for a dive, we noticed that there was very poor visibility, but whilst looking into the water we could see a heap of mackerel swimming around, so we thought it would be worth dropping down a jig and seeing what exactly they were. And in this case, as I just mentioned there, they were just grey mackerels, which were a little bit lesser quality eating than the Spanish mackerels, so we took this one off the hook and we let it go. Fun to catch, but... So whilst all that commotion was going on, what you're seeing right here is actually Mitch in the water who decided to jump in and he took a dive and he shot a very nice black spot tusk fish that would have been up around the 8 to 10 kilo mark. And after watching him play that fish and get it up, that motivated us to get in behind him and take our dive and see what we could get for ourselves. Over 
All right, so what you're seeing here is me communicating with Tom in the water, swimming side by side, and I'd seen a big black spot to this fish, which we refer to as just a bone for short. And I'd actually gone down to scope out this blue bone and find it around the back of the ledge. But in doing so, as I've gone down, as you'll see here, a big coral trout has appeared and I wasn't going to miss this opportunity to take this one because it was a very healthy trout and I was very happy to take this one home and not waste my time searching for that blue bone in case it was going to come back around later anyway. Nice one. Nice one, bub. That's a hell good blue one there, right? I went to dive on it and then that thing popped out. I was like, damn, that's a good trout. Go get the bone. I know Rowan's going to regret not talking to the camera as much, so I thought I'd do it for him. So the boys are just having their last dive. The wind is a bit shitter today than we thought it was going to be. So the boys are just in there trying to get a couple more fish to take home, hopefully. And then we have to head back in so we can cross the river in time before the tide gets us. Um, yeah, that's it, eh? It's too cold for me to dive, so I gave up. Tom's got another nice cray there. Well, we're eating some, that one up pretty nicely for me. So as you can see here, I take another dive and bang. Another coral trout there, this one's for Eden. And I was pretty happy with that. If you'd seen the video previous, you'd see how well we done diving the day before. So didn't need any more fish after that. Just a couple of extra ones to take home and make it worth our while. And that was that. So after shooting those last couple of fish, we made the remainder of the journey back to the boat ramp where it was now time to hitch the boats back onto the trailer and get on out of there. Overall the trip went really well, day one was a great success which I shared in the video previous to this one and I hope you guys have checked out. If not, it's definitely worth checking out, it's a bit more eventful for this with a bit more thorough editing but I just thought that some of these clips here were worth sharing anyway as it paints a better picture of what everything is about and it's not always smooth sailing as you saw in the morning there had to wake up in the morning push the boat off the beach that could have got tricky it didn't fortunately but everything went well and i'm very grateful to have experienced this trip yet again in this new boat so thanks for watching and i hope to see you guys in the next video